Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, today it is X-Men 2 for the Sega Genesis. Now X-Men 2 is actually kind of interesting in that uh, it's one of the few games I can think of where it actually throws you right into the gameplay. And uh, so we're actually right in the game already, so with, with little inter introduction. And um, trying to get my volume level set here because I don't have headphones on today. Um, I actually had some technical difficulties on my desktop recently, and my capture card on my desktop uh, is no longer functioning. And uh, unfortunately, it's an older desktop, so it doesn't have USB 3.0. So my current capture card, which I'm using right now, the Elgato HD 60S, will not function on my uh, my desktop. So I'm actually out in my living room doing this on my my laptop, which I normally use for streaming in the living room. So my setup's a little bit different here. I don't have a headphone setup out here, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we're in X-Men 2 for the Sega Genesis. This is, uh, I, I have very mixed feelings on this game. And uh, m much of that is actually just because uh, I finally finished this game for the first time yesterday, actually. Well, probably not yesterday as of uploading this, but let's just say recently I finished it for the very first time. Uh, this was a game I played a ton as a kid. One of my best friends as a kid had this game. Uh, we played this game all the time in two-player mode. We, we loved playing this game. Um, although we were never that great at it. We, we, we were able to get maybe, you know, I'd say... I'd say back in the day I was probably able to get at least halfway through the game on my own or with, with a friend. Uh, but we had to use cheat codes to see what the, the final uh, end game was like and so forth in, in the later stages. Um, and even as an adult, I found that this was a, a pretty challenging game. Um, granted, I was able to get to it a lot. Uh, I was able to get much farther as an adult, but I still had some roadblocks. Uh, one roadblock was not quite halfway through the game. Um, and uh, that always... I'll, I'll tell you what the roadblock is once we get there. But I ha ran into a roadblock as an adult, which kept me from really progressing through the game and figuring it out and actually finally finishing it uh, legitimately without cheat codes. Um, fortunately, I actually did a uh, live stream of this about a year ago on Twitch and I uploaded the archive to YouTube and just recently I had somebody comment on that video. Somebody stumbled upon that video and commented on it and told me how to get past the part I was having trouble with. And so this past weekend I decided to go ahead and give that a try and sure enough it worked and I'm going to show you his strategy. Uh, in this video, and it's really the only strategy I've been able to use to get past that very specific part. Um, and then that led me on my way to actually making progress in this game. I, I actually tore through the, the second half of the game uh, after that, and um, with one minor hiccup, and I'll, I'll sort of explain that once we get there as well. Um, but then the final boss. Holy crap, did this game... Uh, tip your expectations of it, you know, on its head. Uh, it turns into Battletoads levels of, of stupid, basically, at the very end of this game. And I have no idea why the developers did that. Which is why I'm very mixed on this game right now. Like, I've always loved this game. Like, I think it's got really, really good graphics for a Genesis game. Really large sprites. Uh, if you're playing it single player, it never dips below... Well... It very rarely dips below 60 frames a second. You know, it's it's a super slick, super smooth game on the Genesis. And, you know, not many games on the Genesis, uh, you know, managed to get frame rates so smooth. Like, they always had some sort of slowdown, or they had frame skipping. Especially the ones developed in, you know, Western territories. Like, the Japanese ones typically were a little more polished. Um, but a lot of the Western developed Genesis games had, like, sub-30 frame rates. You know, there was choppy animation and things like that. You know, like like the first X-Men on Genesis. Uh, this game is just like light years above uh, the first X-Men on the Genesis in terms of the polish department, the, the technical prowess of uh, the engine and, and how tight the gameplay is. You know, it, everything is very responsive in this game, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, always been a, a really cool game, but because of the final area in the game, uh, and some major frustration I had with it trying to beat this game for the first time. Um, I don't know if I, I like this game as much as I used to. Now that I've seen the whole thing and I, I see where I, it goes without cheat codes, uh, it gets it, it's really, really challenging at the, the final portion of the game. And even lots of earlier portions of the game require lots of trial and error as well. So 
Uh, this is definitely not the kind of game that's going to be for everybody. And it is the kind of game I feel that if you're going to play it, you should probably play it with the second person. That's how I did it back in the day. I actually prefer playing these games by myself. I, I, I don't really do two-player much anymore. I don't have friends over, so I don't really do a lot of couch co-op these days, except for on special occasions. Um, but if you're thinking about playing this game, if you've never played it before, if you've only played it very little, next time you play it, maybe try to have a friend over. Uh, play it with two people. I think it'll make things a little less frustrating. Uh, you do have limited lives in this game. Uh, each player does get eight lives, though. So between the both of you, you got 16 lives to work with. Imagine lives as being continues, basically. Um, and whenever you die in this game, you usually have to go back to the very beginning of the stage. So there aren't really any checkpoints, per se. Um, so here's the story stuff. I'll go ahead and just let some of this play out. Um, and I want to try to skip through it relatively quickly. Um, it, it is story focused. So between stages, you'll see story segments like that. And then the end of the game, it just kind of ends on a sort of like depressing note in a way, just to spoil things. And it's, it's just more another wall of text when you beat the game, unfortunately. No special ending, no special pictures or anything, which is kind of a shame. That, I, that's also part of my disappointment with uh, finishing this game for the first time, is I found that the ending is kind of crap, actually. And uh, to go through all the trouble to beat the game and just to get a, a couple lines of text... You know, it's trying to simulate the, the story, trying to convey the story, but it's like, I, I would like to see some graphics and, and stuff like that. And maybe, and things on a slightly lighter note, considering I busted my balls trying to beat this game. Um, that's just kind of the way I look at it. It reminds me of Battletoads, actually, and there's, there's a lot of parallels to Battletoads. Not that a lot of this game is trial and error like Battletoads is, um, but it requires the endurance of Battletoads. It, it's a long game for one. It's going to take you probably at least an hour to complete the game, uh, maybe more, uh, on a, on a decent run, mind you, um, and, uh, you know, Battletoads takes a little less than an hour to complete, uh, but the, the later stages in the game require lots of endurance, they're, they're, they're quite long, and, um, uh, especially the final boss rush. I'd have no idea what the developers were thinking on the final boss rush in this game. Not giving you a checkpoint between fights or giving you more health to work with and things like that. And I'm not gonna get too far ahead of myself. I'll, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just wait and let you guys actually see it. Um, you know, show, don't tell, you know, and that sort of thing. So let me just show you uh, the frustrating aspects of this game later on. Uh, so this is uh, kind of like your first real level. I mean, the first level we just played is a real level as well. So just because um, uh, you get tossed right into the stage when you boot the game up, uh, don't discount it as just like a training level. You can just skip there. You can't. You actually have to play it. Uh, if you start playing that level uh, and you die, you actually lose a life. And uh, you, can, you can pick an X-Men afterwards and try it again. So it is an actual level, but it is just kind of cool how it's implemented. So basically, when you boot the console up, it picks an X-Men character for you um, randomly. Uh, so you can actually just, if you want, you can reset the console as many times as you, as you want to get the character you want. Uh, that's actually what we used to do way back when, when this game was new, is we would just reset the console over and over until we got someone like Gambit or Wolverine or, or something like that. Uh, yeah, just a heads up, we're going to be playing as Wolverine for pretty much the, the entirety of this Let's Play. Uh, to me, he's by far the best character in the game. He's uh, extremely powerful. He's extremely fast. Uh, he's got a little bit of a double jump. The double jump doesn't do a whole lot of good with Wolverine. Um, but it is there to give you a little bit of an extra boost, which is nice. And uh, his, his mutant attack or mutant power, or mutant powers, I should say, are really good. So by pressing A, he can do this lunge attack. Uh, a is your special attack ability, so, um, a lot of X-Men in this game, they have, like, charge meters, like, uh, Nightcrawler's got a charge meter, he could charge up and do his teleport, um, Gambit's got a charge meter, he could charge up and throw his, uh, his cards. Cyclops, same thing, he could shoot his laser beam, uh, Beast can pound down to the ground, and if his health is almost at max, uh, he'll shoot, like, a shockwave across the floor. Um, Wolverine does not have a meter, but pressing A, he does this, this lunging attack. And when your life is in the yellow, your life is the, uh, the bar on the left by the X1. 
Um, the X1 just indicates you're player one. That's it. It's, it's not lives or anything like that. Uh, when your life is in the yellow, your your special powers are the most powerful, and you can see the animation actually. An animation, well, yeah, animation. The art actually changes. Um, you can see it looks like it's it's just like a saw blades, you know. Um, it's uh, really really cool, but insanely powerful. Uh, Wolverine, I think, is by far the most powerful character in the game. Um, maybe, well, apparently Beast's regular attacks are more powerful than other X-Men's regular attacks, but Wolverine's special attack, I think, is the most powerful in the game. And, uh, and so when your life is in the yellow, that's when your special attack really becomes, uh, worthwhile with Wolverine. Uh, there are later bosses in the game you can take out in two hits, uh, and normally it would take you, like, seven or eight with, uh, a regular attack, so... Uh, when you're fully powered up with Wolverine, it doesn't really matter so much in the early parts of the game because most enemies take, you know, one or two hits in the very beginning of the game. Um, but later on in the game, there's lots of enemies that take like three or four hits with a regular attack. But with his special powered up attack, um, they take one hit. So, and that's why we're going to be using Wolverine for much of the game. I also like how uh, you can just play quickly with Wolverine. So what I do a lot of times is I use his lunge attack here. Um, to just kill enemies and keep moving at the same time because it, it actually pushes you forward when you do it And as I'm explaining things I'm taking a lot of damage, but it's not really a big deal in this level um, I don't think we're gonna die. I don't think we're gonna run into too much trouble here um, Yeah, I didn't really explain it, but on this area what we have to do is destroy these um, uh, These these boxes which uh, Will allow us to get through uh, these locked doors basically you can kind of see what's happening um, so here's a locked door right here and I need to find the box to destroy which will activate that that tiny box so here it is and you gotta watch out for the uh, the electricity that travels along the ground <clears throat> now we're actually getting close to the boss fight I think uh, we're probably a little over halfway through this section so, while this is level 2, I kind of look at uh, X-Men 2 as, like, every new scene is, like, a new level, basically. Um, because they give you the option to choose another X-Men. So, I look at this now as the next stage. And even though it's just kind of, like, still the same stage, like, we're on level 2, 3, or something, X-Men 2 never tells you what level you're actually on. It never says, oh, you're on level 4, or entering level 5. Or entering level 5-2 or something like that. So I just look at them all as like, okay, we're now we're on like level 4 or something, even though it doesn't tell us. There's like, probably like 20 stages in the game if you look at it that way. And uh, so this is our first main boss fight here. We need to destroy these uh, these cores or these, uh, these boxes, whatever you want to call them. Now when the boxes are open, you can see how like, um, you know, the boxes are rotating around. Um... When there's an opening, uh, it'll actually shoot out beams of uh, electricity at you, so you have to watch out for that. You've also got to watch out for the dude's head up top. He shoots out um, projectiles as well. So one thing you can do in this fight, you can actually use Beast, and Beast can actually duck under those uh, beams of electricity. Uh, Wolverine cannot, unfortunately. He cannot duck that low. Alright, so we got this last one, and that's it. Now we're going to have to go back out and escape before the place blows up. Uh, but first we're going to grab some health up here. Uh, these strands of DNA looking things, uh, they give you your health back. The teensy tiny ones give you um, one hit point back. Uh, the long strands I think give you three. And then there's uh, long strands that also have like these glowing properties on them. And those will actually refill your entire health bar. Uh, one other reason we pick Wolverine is that uh, he's got the uh, regeneration ability. So just like in the first X-Men uh, on Genesis, you can actually sit still and Wolverine will uh, regenerate some health. Now you can only regenerate up to um, uh, up, up to your third health bar. Um, and there's actually a trick later on in the game where you can actually get up to a fourth. I'm not sure if it works with other characters. I think it's just Wolverine, but I'm not 100% sure. And I'll explain that once we get to that point. But so, unless you're in like a, a sequence like this, and this is the only sequence in the game where you're timed and you have to exit um, within a certain period of time. Uh, but in other parts of the game, you can just sit still. As long as there are no enemies nearby, 
you can just sit still, uh, let your health recharge back up to your third health bar, and then uh, and then continue on. And you're gonna actually see me do that quite a bit later on in the game, um, because the later parts of the game are just, I don't think they're laid out as well as the early parts of the game. Um, it's very easy to just run into enemies and, and play field obstacles and so forth. Uh, it can get a little an annoying actually. And that's it, we just beat the level. So later on in the game, there's going to be a lot of stop-and-go gameplay. Uh, we're going to be um, stopping between hits and so forth to regenerate our health. Uh, just so we don't lose lives. Lives are kind of precious in this game because you don't get, uh, you don't get continues. You get, you get eight lives, but you don't get any more continues after those eight lives are over. So again, we're going to switch back over to Wolverine. Now I have a very specific part where I'm going to be switching over to Psylocke for one level. And then we're going to be switching back to Wolverine. And then uh, towards the end of the game, we're going to be switching over, not towards the end of the game, but at the end of the game, we're going to be switching over to Nightcrawler. Because he is the only way I've been able to figure out how to beat the uh, the final boss rush in the game. So one thing about X Men Two is that there's there's no scoring or anything in this game, which is kind of kind of a shame, in my opinion. Um, mainly because there's a lot of enemies, but in a lot of cases you can actually just skip them, and in some cases it's probably better to just skip them. Like these turrets, they take two hits, and you're more likely to take a hit than you're not when you're trying to attack those turrets. So if you see those turrets, I would recommend just jumping over them completely. But these guys, these uh, flying guys with guns, you definitely want to take them out. And don't get touched by them, otherwise you get hit. So we just picked up uh, that glowing strand of DNA, and that refilled my health completely, which was nice. And so that was the first level. Now we're on the second one. The second one actually has a boss fight to it. And uh, then we have to fall down a, not really an elevator shaft, we have to fall down a shaft. And um, and then we'll be going to another boss fight after that. So here we go, I'm fully maxed out on firepower. I can kill pretty much anything in one hit now with Wolverine. Now one of the other cool things about Wolverine is he can climb on walls, he can also climb on ceilings. Now there's several characters in the game that can actually latch on the walls. Uh, Nightcrawler can actually latch on the walls and walk on ceilings. Uh, Beast can latch on the walls, not ceilings. Um, I believe Psylocke might be able to grab on the walls, but I've never tried it because I barely use Psylocke except for very one specific part. Um, so yeah, Wolverine is just an all-around fantastic character. See, he can just get up on ceilings. Now these guys here with the batons, you cannot do any damage to them when they're glowing. You have to wait until they're they're done glowing. Um, there's actually a DNA strand up here, and you can grab it with Wolverine by jumping up and doing your... Actually, you can just double jump and uh, do your special attack. I figured that out just recently, but I don't need it because I'm maxed out in health. So just a heads up if you decide to play this. There's a lot of little DNA strands just, just out of your, your viewing angle. And I gotta say, the uh, the quote-unquote camera in this game, uh, the screen scrolling, acts a little strange in this game. So look how close the left-hand side of the screen is to me. Um, it, like, it, you get pushed over to one side of the screen, and then it the screen doesn't, like, scroll over immediately. So there could be an enemy right outside that right-hand side of the screen, and I'm not gonna know. So it's best to try to inch your way until you're pushed back over to the other side of the screen. Kind of like this. I'm just tapping on the D-pad, and now we're good. And now I'm basically over as far as I can. And we're going to be doing this a lot later on in the game. So it's kind of like a weird camera mechanic. I'm going to call it a camera mechanic. We didn't really look at it as a camera back in the day, but now that, you know, every 3D game, it's basically... A, <laughs> it's a camera behind the character. Um, I'll just call it a camera for the sake of this video. So yeah, I sort of just inched it over so I could see where that guy was. Kill that dude in one hit. So a lot of X-Men 2, uh, and it really starts with this level in particular, is it just requires uh, patience and methodical gameplay. Um, so that kind of gameplay is not going to be for everybody. I actually don't usually like games that require you to be insanely methodical all the way through from start to finish. 
Uh, I like a little bit of flexibility where you can just go all out and just go crazy with your attacks and just kill lots of things. X-Men 2, a little bit harder to do that um, without taking damage and thus dying in the end. Alright, so we're almost at the boss fight. Now we're going to get all of our health back in just a moment. Right here, see? You can see the, how that strand is sort of like glowing. It's got these sparkles on it. That'll give you all of your health back. Now, this boss could be a pain, and if you die at him, you gotta do this whole level over again. But with Wolverine, you can take him out in just a handful of attacks with your special attack. And I'm gonna sort of go up and go down like that. Bam! Three hits. Normally, he takes something like... God, he takes like 10 or 15 hits with your regular attack. So, that's why Wolverine is awesome in this game. You wanna use his fully powered special ability as much as you can. All right, so this level is a falling stage, and what you need to do on each section is flip these switches. And if you flip these switches, whatever enemies are on that screen die instantly. So this is one of those levels where you want to just do it as fast as you can. You don't want to wait around. Don't even bother attacking the enemies. Um, the reason I say that is there's no incentive to kill the enemies in this game. Uh, and I didn't really realize that as a kid. There's no score system in this game, unfortunately. I, I kind of wish there was a score system to give you at least some kind of incentive to take out the enemies. Um, and, and, and there'd be high score tables as well. You know, for people in this day and age, I do like high score clubs or things like that online. Uh, so there's none of that in this game, unfortunately. Uh, so enemies, you could just skip them. Just don't even worry about them. Just jump over them like this, hit the switch, and move on. Obviously, just don't take enough damage to kill yourself, because that would be bad. Uh, and you'd have to do this section over again. Now, uh, moving back and forth in the air is a little wonky in this game. It's very sensitive. Um, like, you can just tap over just very lightly, but your character will constantly keep moving in that direction. So, what I tend to do is just constantly wiggle back and forth as much as I can to stay as in much of a straight line as I can. Alright, so here's the boss fight. We're going to be basically fighting two bosses. Um, first one is this dude. Unfortunately, I'm not maxed out in health. So, my attack's not as, a powerful, as, not as powerful as it could be. But it's not really a big deal. This isn't really a tough boss fight. He's got a couple of cycles. Uh, once you get him down to a certain amount of health, he goes down and basically, you know, causes a hole in the ground. So you just gotta watch out for that hole. You also have to make sure you're off the ground when his beams touch the wall. Because uh, it sort of like trickles down, touches your feet, and does damage to you. So you've gotta watch out for that. And that's what like the whole sc screen blinking is when uh, his projectiles hit the, uh, hit the walls. So is he gonna hit the wall again? I guess not. Maybe he only does that on the first couple. Yeah. Okay, he probably only does that before he starts making those holes. Alright, so we can pick Wolverine one more time, and then afterwards we're going to switch over to Psylocke. So, now, I'm not actually... I wanted to make this disclaimer when I first started to get the, the video. Um, but I'm not actually that familiar with the X-Men. I've never really read comics. Uh, the most familiar I am with X-Men in general is from the video games. I don't really... Uh, never really read the comics. Uh... I, uh, I watched the TV show as a kid. That was, like, almost 30 years ago now. That was a really long time ago. And, um, so I'm not going to get most of these names right. I'm not even going to try, um, except for the core characters. So we basically, we're at Magneto right now. And you basically push him into this thing, um, device or whatever. Um, and then he joins your team. And then from this point on, you can actually play as Magneto as well. And uh, he's actually a pretty good character, but he's really big and bulky, and he has these super high jumps, so he's not ideal for most stages, but um, there, there is a, a very specific part we're going to be using him on. It's a, it's a very specific boss fight. So now is where I use Psylocke, and this is where that fellow YouTuber, I forgot his name, I meant to check that before doing this video, um... Uh, gave me a tip, and this is this was sort of my roadblock. This is where I would usually get, even back in the day, and then I would lose just because of this boss fight. Uh, so Sightlock actually has uh, her mutant ability allows you to fly through, not really fly, but you know, do an air dash, if you will, almost kind of like Wolverine's special attack. 
uh, in the air, which is nice. So if you're playing as Psylocke, you can get through these areas a little bit quicker. But you obviously don't want to take damage, especially over a jump, because then you'll get forced down like I just did, unfortunately. Now one of the issues with Psylocke is, I mean, she's got a really high jump, which is probably useful in other parts of the game. But right here, the jumps are kind of tight with her. That's one of the only things uh, about playing this part with Psylocke. And what I find is, on this part, it's best to try to jump up on each platform on your way up. I'll sort of, like, re-explain that and demonstrate it on the next section. So there's this guy at the top of the screen that's constantly uh, throwing down these boulders at you. And, uh, and it's hard to tell when they're actually going to come down and hit. So what I find is that it's easier to just do these one by one. Instead of like, if you jump straight up, you're higher, closer to the screen, you have less time to react to these boulders as they come down. See what I mean? Kind of like that. So the screen is higher up now. It's just easier to deal with things. Alright, so we got some more DNA. The other thing about Psylocke is that she's just not as, uh, with her jumping, she's just not as mobile as like Wolverine. So it's harder to avoid these rocks as you're jumping in the air. So the trickiest thing about Psylocke on this level is just actually getting to the top, in my opinion. Uh, but the boss fight is so much easier with her. And now, the trick I'm going to do with Psylocke, you could actually also do with Magneto, I believe. But I think it's even harder to get up to the top with Magneto. Just because he's so big and bulky. And you'll see how large he is on the screen. Uh, well, you actually got a taste for it already on that boss fight. He's pretty much the same size when you control him. Uh, but he's also really slow in his, his movement. Um, sometimes, if you get lucky with a double jump, you can actually get up... There you go, just like that. You can just double jump your way up. You've got to... Um, the timing's a little strict on that, on the double jump. It's a little weird. Alright, boss time. So in this boss, we're gonna just sit right here. Attack his boulders as they come down. He basically sends those little guys out that we were dealing with for the whole level. Uh, but with Psylocke, the hitbox on her weapon is just large enough to where it'll still regi register a hit on this guy. And so what I would usually do is play this with Wolverine and be like, how am I supposed to hit this guy, man? Like, and I would just die over and over. And the thing about dying in this game is you've got to go to the very beginning of the stage. There aren't any mid-level checkpoints or anything. And uh, that's one of the things that actually kind of sucks about this game, is it can get very... Learning this game can be very cumbersome, very frustrating, very annoying. Uh, and this is one of the first levels in the game where that becomes really apparent where like the level itself isn't the easiest and then you get to the boss and you have no idea what to do with the boss and it's just trial and error it's it's a it, it's like almost like Battletoad syndrome basically except Battletoads at least had checkpoints in its levels <laughs> X-Men 2 does not um, and the problem just you know it becomes even more exacerbated later on in the game and you'll see exactly what I mean on the the final stage Even a couple levels before the final stage, it gets pretty pretty ridiculous in terms of how much you have to do and then fight a boss. And then if you die at that boss, you gotta do the whole thing over again. Like, there's one level where it seriously takes, like, it feels like it takes 10 minutes to get through the whole stage, almost. And if you fail, you gotta go all the way back to the beginning. You lose one life all the way back to the beginning. You know, in most games, you'd have a checkpoint if you went that far. Uh, or you'd have and you'd have extra lives, and then a continue would send you all the way back. So that's a little more reasonable, you know? Like, you get to a level, you get three chances to get through it, you get a couple checkpoints, uh, and then if you get a game over, then you get shot back. Okay, I understand that. Um, but X-Men 2 doesn't operate like that. And in, the in you know, a lot of the game, it doesn't really matter that much. You know? Because the levels either aren't that hard, or they're, or they're just not that hard to get through. Um... But later on in the game, it just kind of becomes stupid, actually. And um, 
So if you're the kind of person, I, I, I do recommend actually playing this game. Let me go back a step. I do recommend playing this game. I think it's a well polished Genesis game for the most part. Uh, there are a couple of other hiccups you, you start to experience later on in the game as, as more things happen on screen. Um, but for the most part, it's a really technically sound game. It's, um, you know, I think it's pretty fun as an X-Men game. I mean, there's so many, like, comic book games that just really aren't that good. Um, but X-Men 2 is definitely one of the good ones. It's definitely one that is, is solid and, and worth trying. Now, is it worth finishing? That's the question. It's, it's like I said, it's insanely... Um, difficult towards the end of the game. It's very, very frustrating. Is it worth actually finishing? Uh, I think in that case, I think you have to be a special kind of person. <laughs> Maybe somebody doing YouTube videos or, or has a personal goal to beat really difficult games um, that they were never able to come close to beating as a kid. And that may or may not be me. And, um, you know, if you're that kind of person, maybe you should try X-Men 2. Uh, for completion. If you're not, I would at least try the game and play it and get as far as you can and then just like wipe your hands clean a bit. Just, you know, be like, all right, I'm done. This was fun, you know, just so you could see what the game is like. It does have some, some, you know, some nice traits to it. Je definitely some, um, some solid stuff to it, especially earlier on in the game. I feel like it's more fun in the earlier parts of the game than it is the latter parts of the game, which is the case with a lot of games, unfortunately. They just sort of, like, fall in their face in the, the last 25% of the game or something like that, and X-Men 2 definitely does that. The levels become very, very drawn out, very, very stop and go with, uh, how you have to handle enemies and so forth, uh, unfortunately. But I do recommend still trying X-Men 2. Uh, you know, like I said, it's got a lot of good to it as well. I like some of the music in the earlier parts of the game. Uh, especially some of that boss music where it just almost sounds like Jesper Kid music. Where, uh, you know, it's just banging beats in the background. Um, really cool stuff. Later on in the game, the music becomes a lot more subdued. Um, and there's not really much of it, to be honest with you. Um, but some of the stuff in the earlier parts of the game is, is pretty good. And remember that you can play this game with two players, so if you decide to give this game a try, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, try this out with a friend, you know? Um, that might be the way to go for a lot of you guys out there. I know there's a lot of people that love two-player games. Um, maybe I would love two-player games more if I had friends. But, um, I've always been one for mostly single-player games, except for when I was a kid. That's when I did a lot of two-player gameplay. Um, and, uh... But definitely playing this game with uh, friends, I think, will be the way for a lot of you guys to play it. Alright, so this is, uh, I believe this is Apocalypse. This is uh, our second, or well, not our second, this is another boss fight. Uh, the trick here is just to jump over these uh, explosive devices. And there's a couple of uh, blue ones that you need to attack right here. They drop health. Uh, apparently they do damage to this, this core or this device in the background. And then, after every, uh, so many hits here, uh, Apocalypse comes back down, tries to attack you, you can attack him. And then it's just rinse and repeat, basically. So some of these you can actually duck under, like this one you can duck under. Oops. I didn't mean to take a hit like that. So I took a lot of damage there unnecessarily, so this is going to actually take us a little bit longer uh, to get through. Uh, because Wolverine is not going to be maxed out on his on his attack power, unfortunately. So I made that mistake. Um, again, that's where being methodical in X-Men 2 really comes into play. Is if you're not methodical, boss fights take a lot longer to get through, enemies take a lot longer to get through, and thus the game takes a lot longer to get through. And you actually make life more difficult on yourself by not playing methodically. Uh, because when you're weaker, it just makes everything harder. You know, it's one of those games where when you're fully powered up, uh, you've got the benefit of being able to tear through things um, that you wouldn't normally be able to tear through very quickly. Kind of like a shoot-em-up. Like, you get fully powered up in a shoot-em-up, 
the games become so much easier. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, notwithstanding shmups that have like, you know, rank increases, basically difficulty increases as you get powered up. Um, I think what would have actually been cool in this fight is if uh, this was like a treadmill in a way. Because it looks like it should be that sort of thing. With these objects, you know, flying around in circles. Makes you think like you're on some kind of like treadmill in a way. Uh, and that definitely would have made this fight a lot more interesting. Because for the most part, you can just stand still like this and just stay in place. Usually towards the center is fine. It's better to be towards the right so you can actually see what these things, like where these things are coming from. If they're high or if they're low or how many there are. Alright, so I just ran into a, a technical difficulty in this game. And this is something that um, you'll start to notice more as things get a little more complex with like the, the graphics in the game. As more, as, as the more the Genesis has to do, the less responsive the game becomes, or the more noticeable the, the lack of responsiveness uh, you start to you start to figure out. Especially at the very end of the game, when there's a lot of morphing of characters, and you got this boss that takes up like half the screen, um, and the Genesis starts chucking a little bit. Uh, you'll start you'll, you'll you'll try to jump, you'll you'll try to move, but it won't actually recognize the input. And you have to let go of the D-pad the or the button, and then try it again. And, um, and it always seems to happen at, like, the worst moments as well. So, like, one of the reasons I got hit by one of those cores or those explosive devices is because my jump button didn't register. And it's not my controller. I've actually used uh, multiple controllers on this game. Uh, so it happens with both controllers I have. Uh, so it's definitely uh, an engine issue. Definitely an optimization issue. Uh, definitely an issue related to the performance and it always happens when like the most is happening on screen uh, when the Genesis is basically pushing as many sprites as it can and <laughs> Dealing with as much of the AI as it can All right, so um, I'm skipping through the stories now But I'm leaving just enough to where you can pause the video right on it if you really want to All right, so now we are I think we're in like the forested area yeah, so this is where the game becomes kind of annoying, to be honest with you. The level design is, uh, and you know, like, something I wanted to point out earlier on, uh, and it's actually probably best I do it now, is that the level design in this game is very, you'll notice it's, like, very rectangular and square. There are no, like, rising hills or anything to run up. Uh, everything is just very rigid, very, you know... Very 90 degree angle ish like look at this you got it you got a platform and then a wall It's a 90 degree angle and that's how pretty much all the levels in this game are set up And it becomes really apparent on this stage though like the other stages you felt like there was enough going on um, That it didn't feel so rigid, but this level you go up a corridor you go down a corridor you go back up a corridor You go down a corridor and then you've got these really annoying traps you have to deal with which just you know, uh, it it, it um, stresses that style of uh, level design and platform design even further, unfortunately. So from here on out, I think the game gets a little it gets a little boring, in my opinion. I mean, for one, just there's not really any background music on this stage. Uh, it's just you hear you know insects and um, and so forth. You know, in the background, I'm assuming that's what the uh, the music's trying to replicate. And, and that's pretty much it. You've got these spiky things, uh, these spiky plant things. You've got these little turrets on the ground that shoot these projectiles out. So it just becomes a major pain from this point on. Gee, let's see if there is a... Sometimes you can get some health up in the, the trees. But we're not high, high enough up yet for that, so... Oh yeah, one thing I want to also talk about is these explosive things. There's explosive things all throughout the course of the game, right from the very first level up until the last level in, in the game. Uh, the hitboxes on those explosives are much larger than they actually look like. So um, you can see the explosive sprites. You know, it, you know when they explode, there's like you know six sprites come out, five or six sprites come out, indicating an explosion. 
Uh, however, the hitbox is actually larger than those. Huh. I had no idea I could do that. Alright, we're gonna try something up here. I just figured something out. Look at that. Shortcut. Very cool. I didn't, I didn't know about that. That's good. Unfortunately, I can't get back down. Okay, well, I can come here at least. So yeah, you've really got to watch out for the uh, these explosive things. Get away from them as far as you can, just to be safe. Fortunately, we haven't had to use our regeneration ability yet. So in this section of or the, the set of stages, uh, this is probably the worst of the two. The second one we can just run through really, really quickly, uh, which is why I actually like the second one a lot more than uh, this stage in particular. Uh, there's a lot less traps to deal with on the second one if you just run straight through. You don't have to worry about these spiky tree things. Alright, so we're down to uh, three blocks of health. Actually, we're probably going to get one more. Yeah, there was a hidden uh, DNA uh, item up there. Okay, so now you can see our health is at two. What we're going to do is actually just sit here and wait for it to charge back up to three. So usually this is the part of the game where I have to do that, and you can see I'm at three now. And let's see if uh, there's going to be any more slime down on the bottom. Oh, it doesn't really matter. We've got, we've got four hit points. So apparently with this slime with Wolverine, you can sit in it. Um... And uh, if you're at three hit points, it'll go back up to four, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so we're done with that level. That's probably one of the worst levels in the game, just from like a general, a general enjoyment perspective. It's just not that much fun of a level, in my opinion. I, I really don't care for it that much. This one we can at least just bolt through. There's a lot of stuff you can try to explore up top, but really just you can just run to the right for the most part. Kind of like this. Just stay on the bottom path. Just go through these sections. I've never actually tried exploring on this level. But I figured out the other day that you can basically just, you know, take the bottom path and that's it. With a minor exception, you've got to come up here. So I didn't really explain it earlier on in the game, but you can attack up. And when you're in the air, you can attack down. Very important for Wolverine especially, because Wolverine has a very fast downward attack. Other characters in the game have slower attacks, and it's just one more reason why I prefer Wolverine over pretty much any other character in the game. He's fast, he can just cut through stuff really quickly, even his downward slash in the air is really fast, his up slash is relatively quick as well when he's on the ground. Wolverine is just the best all-around character in my opinion. Alright, so we've got two more levels and then a boss fight. The boss fight is when you want to switch over to Magneto. So, we are nearing our way towards the end of the game. We're probably about 65 or 75% through the game now. I'd say probably about 70% through the game. Now, if we can get powered up, if we can get Wolverine's life up a little bit, uh, it'll make this level a lot easier. And this is definitely a level where you don't want to lose your hit points. Um, because it just makes life more difficult. So like these guys, they take two hits. Well, if I'm fully powered up, they take one hit. And now I'm fully powered up. So what I'm going to be trying to do is cutting through these guys as quickly as possible. Oops. There's one, there's two. Oop, took a hit. It's okay. There's actually a lot of uh, DNA samples in this area. As you can see right there, there's another set of DNA. So you're constantly getting your health back in this level as long as you don't take too many hits. And there are some instances where I'm going to want to actually just sit down and attack those guys normally because if I use my special attack, well, I go too far and I go off the platform and I fall down. So the idea with this level is to um, make sure that the, uh, the green slime down below doesn't engulf you. Basically what it's doing is it's rising up through this entire stage and you have to do two stages of this. This is the first one of two. 
and if it comes up and engulfs you, you start losing health relatively quickly, and then you just die. It doesn't kill you instantly. So if you do get, if you do fall and you're you're inside uh, the green slime, you have a few moments to try to get back up. Um, And we've got this exit door here. So you basically have to just bust away all those blocks and then attack the door. All right, so one more level here, and then um, we're gonna switch back over to Magneto. Um, I could kind of show you what he does. He doesn't really have a whole lot of different attacks, just two primary attacks, that's about it. He's just a entirely projectile character, which is kind of interesting. No other character in the game is uh, fully projectile based. Uh, only Magneto. Every other character has melee attacks that you can do. All right, so this part, I'm just gonna work my way up without attacking these guys. I'm gonna try to get some more health. Hopefully, is there health up here? There's no health up there. There's health right here, and we can cut through those guys in one hit. Cut through him in one hit. And just skip him. All right, let's go back down. Because there's, I think there's, yeah, some DNA right here. Now, so this level is pretty tricky. You've got these uh, objects in the walls that can hurt you. Now, later on in the game, these actually turn into to actual enemies. But right now, they're just sort of like obstacles. You can't you can't attack them, unfortunately. But uh, they can hurt you. And so, like I said, this is a tricky section. The platforming in this game can be uh, quite tricky as well. Because... Um, it's not like Castlevania, where you can just sit on the edge. Like, a little less than halfway off the edge, you start, you just, bam, like that, you fall automatically. So it's not like you can sit with, like, your, your far leg hanging like a pixel off the, uh, the, the ledge. It doesn't work like that in this game, unfortunately. So you gotta watch out for that when you're platforming. It's very easy to accidentally, um, you know, slip off a platform when you don't mean to. All right, I think we're almost at the end now. I'm pretty sure the end is towards the top right on this one. And this might be it. Yep, it's it. All right, so we're gonna switch over to Magneto. And you'll quickly see why. So Magneto can actually hover in the air like this. And he can shoot his projectiles in any direction. So we can basically just sit up and fight this guy in complete safety. Now he's actually morphing into enemies we're gonna be fighting later on in the game. So Magneto's special ability is uh, charging up this ball, and it basically just spreads out and attacks in any direction. And now that I'm uh, my health is maxed, it's doing some pretty good damage right now. So when this boss morphs, I have a tendency of uh, bringing out his special ability. That's it. And uh, we're gonna switch back over to Wolverine for the the rest of the game until the final stage where we'll, we'll switch back over to Nightcrawler. Not really switch back over, but since I haven't played him yet, but we'll switch over to Nightcrawler. Uh, so there's that story if you wanna pause the screen. Oh, it skipped. There's another one. And then, uh, Go ahead and skip through that and select Wolverine. All right, so this is probably 
the level in the game that's the the biggest pain. It's gonna be the biggest pain for most people uh, because it's long. Uh, it's somewhat challenging. There's just a lot of enemies to deal with. And uh, if you don't defeat the boss, you've got to do this entire level over again. This is the one I was talking about where it feels like it takes 10 minutes to get through the whole stage. Um, and if you fail, you got to go all the way back down to the beginning. So I got to make sure like, I, I focus here and I, I don't start taking unnecessary damage. So these guys are in the beginning of the game, but they're a lot faster now, so you gotta watch out for them. They basically spit out these uh, small beams of fire. And these yellow guys uh, with the guns, what you want to do with them is attack them once and then get away, wait for them to attack, and then run in after they're done attacking and, and kill them. Uh, they take two hits with normal attacks, they take one hit if Wolverine's fully powered up. So sometimes they shoot up, sometimes they shoot straight forward, sometimes they shoot down. So you really need to figure out where they're shooting. I was hoping there was going to be some health over here, but apparently not. We're going to just take our time. Sometimes those guys explode into, like, five-way DNA strands, but unfortunately they uh, did not do that. So I'm going to actually go this way over here, because there's some health up there. Assuming I don't... Let's just sit here and get our health back up. So like I said, that's one of the, the great re reasons to play as Wolverine, is just you can... You know, if you've got one hit point left and you think you might take, hit, take another hit and die, you'd be like, okay, let me just stop. Let me just stop, get my health back. There we go. So we're at three blocks of health now. So I can still take a couple of hits. So the in this level, there's a bunch of these switches which activate these elevators. So if you hit it again, it actually stops it. Uh, this actually isn't really necessary if you're playing as Wolverine because he can just climb up the wall. Not really a big deal with him. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, other elevators in the game or in this level that you do need this, um, to activate with Wolverine. Well, that was weird. Now, one thing we got to watch out for in this level is falling too quickly. Uh, I ran into a situation yesterday when I was practicing this game where I fell from, like, near the top of the level and couldn't find a platform on the way back down and just kept falling and falling, and the screen was scrolling really fast because I just kept falling and missing my platforms. And then the screen froze. The, ga the whole game just locked up on me. Um, the music was still playing, but I couldn't pause it, I couldn't unpause it. Um, so, ooh, that was close. See, I, just like that, the screen scrolled so quickly, the game just froze on me. Um, I assume it was a bug in the game. Um, I have had it freeze before, just once, actually. And the music, uh, you know, just like with, you know, last night's freeze, the, the music kept playing. I couldn't pause or unpause or anything like that. Um, so let's try to not miss any jumps, because I don't want that to happen. If that happens, what I'm going to have to do is actually enter a uh, cheat code, which will give us a level select. Um, fortunately, there is a level select code in this game, so if you get fed up with like the goofy design with no checkpoints and um, more specifically limited lives, uh, you can actually, uh, you know, find that code online. If you just type in, uh, if you go to like Google or Yahoo or something like that, and if you type in uh, X-Men 2 uh, cheat codes, uh, it'll be like the first thing that comes up. It'll be like a condensed uh, game facts uh, cheat list. And uh, that's actually how I practiced the, uh, the final boss. Because I was like, especially after the game froze on me, I was like, okay, I'm not going through the whole game again after spending an hour getting up to this point, basically. Only to have the game freeze on me. So. Alright, we're getting closer to the, uh, the boss. I 
Now, it doesn't really matter how much life or damage you take. Man, I can't talk right now, man. <laughs> oh, it doesn't really matter how much damage you take towards the end of the, you know... Holy shit, I can't talk. Holy crap. Ah. Uh, I think I shouldn't have drank that tea before starting this Let's Play. My mouth is like... Ah. I think I need to drink some water or something, man. So it doesn't matter how much damage you take because uh, as long as you get to the end of this level without uh, losing all your health in dying, because uh, there is actually a DNA strain that'll give you all your health back right at the end of this stage. And once you get to these moving platform sections, you know you're at the end of the level. You just gotta make sure you flip these switches. There's another DNA strain right there. That'll give me all my health back as well. So this is where it gets really tricky, though. I mean, for a lot of casual players, I think a lot of people will have problems with this. Uh, this level. With the, the weird platforming and so forth. The spikes, things like that. Um, I mean, the earlier parts of this level are pretty tame in comparison, but then you've got, you know, more precision platforming, which uh, will, will most certainly aggravate. Oh, there we see that. That's exactly what happened last night. I fell so far and the game just froze. And that's the other frustrating thing about this level is... You can fall, and you'll be like, oh, it's okay, I'll just fall on a platform, and no, you'll just, you'll miss one platform, then you'll miss another platform, and then you'll miss another platform, and... Yeah. Kind of like that, right there. Oh my god, come on, man. I actually never have this much of a problem with this stage, but over the last two nights, I have. Which is really weird, because every other time I've played it, uh, I haven't really had any issues. I haven't had issues getting up. Uh, to the top, but but beating the boss, that's another story altogether. The boss actually gave me quite a bit of trouble when I uh, was first experiencing him. Uh, but I did find out the trick, I did discover the trick, so uh, once we get to the boss, we shouldn't have any problems after that. But getting to the boss is another story altogether. It's really best just to not use Wolverine's special attack here on this, this stage, or at least up on these platforms, these moving platforms. Just play it nice and um, slow and methodical. Just jump. Don't use your special attack to try to speed run through or anything like that. Alright, getting close, getting close. They really don't care about how much damage I take because we're at the boss now. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is try to attack this guy once. Or twice. Three times, maybe. <laughs> With my fully powered attack. And then we're just gonna mash our attack while ducking in front of him. But we need to jump over this, and then jump over it again. It's very, very fast. And he's dead. And just like I said, if you die there, all the way back down to the bottom for you. All the way back down to the bottom for you. Alright, so this is basically an elevator section. Very reminiscent of a lot of beat em ups from back in the day. It seemed like uh, there's like a meme that basically says, like, every beat em up has to have an elevator stage, you know? And uh, X Men 2 kind of kind of falls in that line a little bit. It's kind of like a beat em up, kind of not. Um, but it's got an elevator stage as well. And it's basically just a lot of these drones come out. And that's pretty much it. Now, you want to try to get to the boss with uh, full health if possible, because you can actually kill the boss in two hits with Wolverine if uh, you're maxed out on health. Or if your health is in the yellow, sorry. So when your health is in the yellow, that's when your, your, you know, your special power is upgraded. So this is yet another example of how the, the, the stages start to just drag on in X-Men 2. Like this elevator section, 
probably could just be over already. But it goes on forever. And you're just doing the exact same thing. You're just killing the same drones over and over. And there's really no satisfaction uh, when I'm attacking these things. Because, again, there's no scoring. I'm not working towards, like, extra lives or anything. Um, it's just all about survival, basically. But it's, I'm not really using my head either. I'm just going back and forth and attacking these guys one by one. Oh, well, that health disappeared pretty quickly. That was weird. I'm just waiting for the boss to appear, basically. Fortunately, they do go away when the boss appears. There we go. Here's the boss. It's one hit. Two hits. Pretty sure you could do it in 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 uh, two hits. Maybe your life has to be you know maxed. Maybe Wolverine's even more powerful when he's when his health is completely full. I don't know. But I'm I'm certain that I've killed that boss in two hits before, multiple times actually. Even la in last night's run when I was trying to practice this game and and finish it for the first time. Um, I definitely killed that boss in two hits. So, again, this is where the game also starts to feel like it, it drags on quite a bit. Now, I'm not trying to sound super negative in this part of the Let's Play, but, you know, you guys watching can probably tell as well. You're probably thinking to yourselves, like, man, this game probably could have ended about ten minutes ago. Um... And so the last couple of stages in the game are very much like this. It's uh, run left, go up, run right, go up, run right some more, go up, run run left, you know, deal with these really annoying enemies that all shoot projectiles at you now. So this is where the game becomes very stop and go. That last level is very stop and go as well. Lots of projectiles you got to watch out for. And it really helps to be able to kill these guys in one hit, if you can. There's actually some health up here, in case you need it. There's two DNA strands. Well, we'll go ahead and skip that one. Oh, no, we'll grab it. There's also a tiny one up here, in case you need it. Alright, so these guys right here, you can kill them in one hit with Wolverine uh, when he's maxed out. Um, or they take four hits normally. So they're one of the first examples in the game of enemies that take four hits, um, but can be killed in one hit with Wolverine. Okay, so let's go up here. I think there's actually some more health. It's like these guys take four hits as well. Yep, there's some more DNA. And come to think of it, I, I think it's actually... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, it's kind of a shame, like, the top part doesn't scroll. Um, but I forgot there's actually parallax scrolling here. So there's not parallax scrolling in every level in the game. The levels that it does have parallax scrolling on are definitely pretty cool to look at. I'm a sucker for some good Genesis parallax scrolling. Basically, parallax scrolling for those guys that are you a little bit younger and don't know, it's multiple background layers, basically. Not maybe multiple background layers. You can see how, like, you know, it's it's a s form of background scrolling that um, basically, you know, gives you, like, a pseudo 3D feel. Gives you depth to it, basically. Um, so X-Men 2 has uh, a, a good bit of that in very specific parts of the game, which is cool. And a lot of Genesis games did that. Um... It was definitely one of the things the Genesis was pretty good at doing. You, know, you can look at games like Thunder Force 4, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, those are all games that had a lot of parallax scrolling. Oops, man. I'm not paying attention now. This is also where X-Men 2's endurance requirement starts to you know, rear its ugly head. 
Because by this point in the game, you start to care less. You're just like, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over now. And it's just, uh, you know, it requires endurance. Uh, if you're playing this game, what I might recommend doing is play about halfway or three quarters of the way. Pause it, step away, grab a drink, grab grab a beer, grab, a, grab some food, I don't know. Grab whatever. And then come back and try it again. Or, or continue on, basically. So one of the things about these guys that take four hits is that if you hit them three times in a row, they basically activate the shield and are invincible for like a second or two. Oops. So when I'm attacking those really big bugs that take four hits, uh, what I typically do is I attack them once, I wait for them to fire, I attack again, wait for them to fire. You know, very slow, methodical attacking. But, if I'm fully powered up, I can kill him in one hit, just like so. Alright, that's the exit. Still on Wolverine. And this is basically our final actual stage. And this is a really long level, and I'm pretty sure if I die, I have to I get shot back all the way to this drop. And there's many drops on this level. So there's actually a DNA strain right there, gives me all my health. I'm just gonna wait for this guy to drop. I'm gonna wait for that one to drop. And so what I'm going to do on this, uh, this section is, if I can find the exit, I'm just going to exit. Because, uh, uh, there's really no reason to try to explore unless you're just trying to build your health back up. Here, he's invincible. Okay, there we go. I know there's a way to get this DNA strand. There we go. So it seems like you actually get a higher boost on your double jump if you do your double jump as you're going up. So basically, so if you do your double jump as you're going down, it's not really a double jump at all. But if you do it as you're going up, you actually go higher. Yeah. The timing is a little weird on that. Alright, so the second falling section, and this is where, like, your practice on that first falling level uh, will come in handy. Now, I'm trying to be really methodical here, but I'm not doing a very good job at it, I think, because I'm, I'm doing this Let's Play, I'm talking and playing at the same time, and, uh, I'm not really in a methodical mood kind of now, to be honest with you. I just want to, like, run and gun. <laughs> But X-Men 2 is not a game where you can run and gun. If you run and gun, you die. Basically. Whoa. So the little guys can go invincible too. It's a little weird, actually. See there, he's invincible. I think the exit on this one might be over to the left. Nope, I was wrong. I'm taking up a different one. Might be this next one coming up where the exit's to the left. Alright, we're gonna try to skip through this if we can. There's a bunch of guys up there. One of them is actually, like, hidden behind uh, one of the columns. Right there, right above me. Right here.
Alright, so I'm pretty sure we can come down below here, and I think this is our exit. Yep, that's our exit. And one more fall. Alright, we're just gonna get our health back. Let's just sit here for a second. So, uh, you're quickly gonna uh, find why this game is called The Clone Wars uh, on this final stage and, and uh, final boss rush that we're going to uh, encounter shortly. See, you can see how I'm being very reckless here. Like, I keep getting powered up, but then uh, I keep taking damage and I keep losing my, my max attack power. Which is just making this take longer than it really needs to. See, all these gold guys I could be killing in one hit. All these big insects I could be killing in one hit. See, I just took two hits back to back. Three hits. See, one of the things in this game is that there's very little invincibility frames in this game. So, when you take a hit, um, you need to get away, otherwise you're gonna take another hit almost instantly. It's just, it's just how it works. So... Alright, are we at the end yet? See, this level is so long. Yeah, this is the last one actually, I believe. I think. So you can either go up, or you can go right. This actually has two paths to it. Um, let's go ahead and just go right. Okay, so those, uh, these yellow dudes here, the ones that actually shoot projectiles all the way across the screen, um, they actually only take two hits. It's the ones that shoot, like, those, uh, those solid beams. They take four hits. So you really need to watch out, um, for the enemies that you're attacking. You need to watch their attack patterns, because the amount of hits that they're gonna take is determined on their attack patterns, basically. It's like this guy, he takes two hits. Alright, let's just get our health back. I definitely want to wait because there's a bunch of these little bugs here. And they basically just like, fly right towards you. And... I gotta say, Wolverine's main attack isn't the fastest, it's really when he jumps is when it's fast. Or when he ducks. His ducking attack is very, very quick. And again, now I've got to deal with like the weird screen scrolling, so I'm going to tap over slowly. And of course I still got hit. I'm just going to wait. The reason I'm waiting is I'm waiting for my health to get back up. I just don't want to take any chances because this is my final exit. Or my final final door, I believe. Alright, now this is the end of the game. Although, depending on how we do, this might also be half the Let's Play. <laughs> We've got eight lives to spare, and uh, I would like to see the end of the game, so... Nightcrawler is, uh, is the one, and, uh, whew. let's see if we can do this, guys. So, this is the first of the, uh, the final boss rush, and, uh, it basically shoots out these laser beams. You can either jump over if you time them right, or you can duck them, and then he smashes into this wall, busting open his head, and with Nightcrawler, as you can see, you can basically do a downwards uh, jump kick on top of his head. 
And this is why I picked Nightcrawler. You can do multiple hits back to back. In this cycle right here, you've got to duck that and then jump over that. Sometimes it's better to just, like, duck his beam, but... Oh, we messed up. We could have killed him instantly there. So now we're on to the next section, and this is the part that's actually kind of the pain. And that boss we just fought, if we fail this next part anywhere at this next part, uh, we have to fight this boss all over again. So the checkpoint on this last section is absolutely horrible. And I actually kind of want to try something. I'm not sure if I'm going to. We might. Alright, so what I'm going to do is uh, come up this way first. And... So, from here on out, I'm basically going to be using Nightcrawler. I have all three fingers across my A, B, and C buttons. Um, so I can basically do his charge attack. I'll go ahead and pick that up. Um, to do his charge attack. And we'll pick that one up too. Um, so I can attack with one, I can do his uh, jump kicks with another, and then I can jump with C, basically. Uh, but I always want to have his charge attack up, if possible. Let's see if we can just climb up on this wall. We're going to wait for this guy to, to shoot, and then jump kick him. We're going to play it safe on these guys. And you can see how Nightcrawler's attack actually will do some damage if he appears on top of an enemy. It's not that powerful, unfortunately. Unless you're in the yellow, then it is powerful. Alright, there we go. Now, we're not going to actually use it right here. We're just going to... On a lot of these bosses, you can just do this. But just because I'm making it look easy, actually, it doesn't mean it is easy. Oops, I messed up. I shouldn't have taken hits there. So, basically, what you have to do is you have to fight uh, six clone X-Men. Basically, everybody on your team except Magneto. But, there's actually, I found out, a hidden way to fight a clone Magneto. And I kind of want to try that out. So, we're going to see if we can do that. Oops. I let go of the A button by accident. Alright, so one down. Five more to go. Now, the problem with this part of the game is that um, you get very limited health pickups. Very, very limited health pickups in order to get through uh, the rest of this. So you've got to go through like these little mini stage areas where you've got enemies to deal with. And then... Um, you've got to actually fight the bosses. So we'll go ahead and just try to kill these guys. So supposedly this is where you can fight Magneto. He's actually through this blocked wall. It doesn't affect the ending in any way though, based on what I've read, which is kind of weird. But... I'm gonna wait for this guy to disappear and then jump past him. This guy, you can just do your jump kicks on. He only takes two hits. Just like I said, the guys that shoot long-range projectiles, they only do two hits. So it's best to just try to take out all these guys. And this is Psylocke. So one strategy I use for Psylocke and Gambit is to use my charge teleportation ability, attack them once, and then teleport away from them to get away. It's not as important with Psylocke as it is Gambit. Gambit's got really long reach with his weapon. And the thing about Psylocke is you gotta watch out for her slide. That'll catch you off guard. So basically, you have to fight these guys as is, and then they go into this this other mode here. And they each have a different attack, depending on which X-Men you're fighting. 
So the big thing about this is trying to figure out how to deal with each of the clone X-Men. And again, like I said, you've got to do all this in one go. Uh, otherwise, you got to go back and fight that insect thing and do it all over again. And that's why this last section of the game really uh, gets to battle to, and maybe even exceeds battle to its levels in terms of the endurance required. Um, because it's very easy to take damage. It's very easy to take multiple hit, multiple hits back to back. So I'm trying to play it very safe right now because I only have two hit points, and we're not Wolverine. So, I can't regenerate my health with a without actually picking up health. Let's wait for this guy to disappear, just like so. Alright, so we're going to come back down. We're going to actually pick up some health. We're going to go to the, the, the main health room. Okay, good. There's still another DNA strand there. So, the health room is right over here. Again, I'm going to be playing this very safe. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So you get six medium-sized DNA strands. They each give you three hit points apiece. So I basically need to do the other four X-Men uh, without using all those up. So uh, we're going to come back up to the top. These top right ones seem to give me the most trouble in terms of like the enemies beforehand. We want to take it nice and slow. And this guy, we're just going to skip over completely. Just wait for him to disappear. And again, I'm playing it very, very safe. <laughs> so with Nightcrawler, you can, you can walk on the ceilings. And this is Wolverine. So Wolverine's actually one of the easier ones, fortunately. You can just sit right on top of his head. With Beast, Beast has a tendency of like moving back and forth. Wow! I've never done that before, where I got him in one swoop. That was pretty awesome, actually. And we didn't even trigger that bug by walking, you know, past him. That's pretty cool. And we'll just pass this guy. So this top one's going to be Gambit. And this is where I really need Nightcrawler. I tried doing this with Wolverine at first, but I kept getting hit by him. And then I got the idea. I was like, I wonder if you can sort of like not really cancel your jump kick and go into your teleporter. But I tried it and... It's definitely a very good strategy on Gambit. Look at how long, long range this attack is. And it's so fast. You just, you can't get away. If you get up and punch him, you can't get away fast enough. Unfortunately, I did take a hit. I don't think this is going to hit me. Nope. I right, get back over here. There we go. Just gonna bait him back over and just rinse and repeat like this, basically. I do like how uh, this form it actually forms into a spade, which is really cool. I think that's actually kind of kind of a neat little uh, neat little nod to uh, Gambit and you know his cards and card games and so forth. That's pretty cool. So we're actually doing really well with this. We still have three strands of health left. No, actually, I think I think four strands of health that we can pick up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to fight uh, Cyclops. No, not we're gonna try to fight Nightcrawler because Nightcrawler seems to be the most inconsistent for me. There's going to be a guy up here. So in this level, it really, really helps to absolutely know where all the enemies are. And then just take things really slow as you get here. 
And again, with Nightcrawler, you can, your jump kick, you know, you'll hop off enemies' heads, and then you can basically do multiple attacks while you're in the air, which is nice. All right, so let's walk over. So there's actually a glitch that can happen on this section where uh, the screen won't scroll over all the way, and it'll really mess you up. All right, that's it. Very good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get all of our health back up. And I've never... Assuming this works, I've never actually fought uh, the clone Magneto. So we're going to go ahead and pick up this health. Oh, yeah, because we only have Cyclops to go. We're actually doing really well, surprisingly. And remember, if you fail any of this, you got to go back and start from the beginning. Bam. Okay, so the walkthrough was right. So basically, when you get one X-Men left, one clone left, you come down here, you attack that wall, and then you come back up here to this room. I don't think it was that one. I think it was this one. And the wall can be busted open. And let's hope for the best here. Okay, he seems pretty much just like the other ones. Okay, I'm not too worried, actually. Oops. That's it? Wow, okay, cool. Well, we figured something out that I, I didn't know about before. That's awesome. Somebody was talking about that in my chat on Twitch. Um, but it's like a little Easter egg, basically. It's not mandatory, and supposedly it has no effect on the actual ending. Uh, which is actually surprising to me, because you'd think that if there really was a clone Magneto there, story-wise, um, it would definitely have some bearing on the story. So, like, a clone Magneto would be running rampant in the world afterwards, but apparently not. So, so we're gonna just skip through this guy. Only problem with skipping through him is I always have a tendency of um, uh, running into the uh, the other guy down below and his projectiles. So this is the last one, guys. I think we're going to pretty much beat the game. I wasn't expecting to finish it on my first try. Um, basically a 1cc, which is kind of cool in this game. One credit clear. I should say one life clear. So Cyclops' uh, pattern is he basically shoots uh, three projectiles at you and then does two of those smash attacks. The smash attacks basically leave behind explosives, explosions, and that's what actually hurts you. The actual being itself doesn't actually damage you, so you can touch those like floating balls or whatever and be fine. And then that's it. Now the whole place is going to look like it's exploding. Um, I don't think you really need to actually go anywhere, but... And that's it. We just finished the game. We just beat X-Men 2 without dying. Um, so I basically went from, like, controller smashing rage with this game to being able to beat it without dying. So... But yeah, without Nightcrawler, I don't think I'd be able to finish the game, honestly. I tried it with Wolverine, I tried it with Psylocke, I tried it with, uh... Beast. Um, I mean, with Beast, it might be doable because he can hop on enemies' heads as well. So maybe I should try it with Beast sometime. Um, Magneto, it's just too difficult to deal with the first boss, really. He's just so slow. Uh, so Nightcrawler is my main strategy. And if any of, any of you guys out there were watching that have played this game but weren't able to finish it, uh, hopefully, you know, my Nightcrawler strategy will, will be of use to you and you guys can try that out and see if that's how you can finish it. So basically what you can do with Nightcrawler, like I showed you, is that you can do your jump kicks and then teleport away. It really requires you to have all three fingers on the Genesis controller because you need to be able to jump, you need to be able to attack, and then you need to be able to use your special at the same time. So 
Um, but if you can do that, if you can manage that, then I think that's the best strategy in my opinion. It's the safest strategy. Um, I was reading walkthroughs online of this game and people were like, yeah, just, just use Wolverine for the last section and it's easy. I'm like, dude, have you even beaten the game? Like, <laughs> he probably just gave up and wrote the walkthrough there because he didn't, he didn't mention the ending at all or anything like that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever, man. <laughs> All right, so that's basically the ending. A um, little bit of text, a little bit of drama. Uh, that's that's basically the whole ending. You see Professor Xavier there, unfortunately, and that's it. No other, no other, no other pictures, no other, you know, X Men portraits or anything like that. It's just it goes straight to the credits um, after this, and that's pretty much it. So when I first saw the ending, I was like, God, why did I spend all that time trying to beat this game? It reminded me of the Battletoads ending, honestly. You just get a couple of walls of text, and that's it. And then the game goes back to the title screen. And, uh... So that, guys, is X-Men 2, The Clone Wars. For the sake of Genesis. Um... I'm not as angry at this game as I was the other day when I raged at it. Um... Trying to finish it for the first time. Uh... And I definitely don't feel this bad now, after I did... Or as I did when I first finished it last night. But, um... Uh, I do still recommend trying this game if you're a fan of uh, the X-Men, if you're a fan of Genesis action games. Uh, if you were a fan of the first X-Men on Genesis, uh, I think this one is definitely a big step up in a lot of ways. Uh, it's it's just, ugh. it's extremely frustrating towards the end of the game, though. It's, it's very endurance heavy, and if you don't have the endurance for something like this, you're probably not going to see through to the end of the game without using, like, a Game Genie code or something like that. But, uh... So that is the ending, and we go to the uh, the staff credits now, and that's pretty much it. So, um, not really sure if there's really anything else for me to talk about. Um, trying to think off the top of my head, but I can't really think. So, uh, uh, just a heads up, guys, for any of you guys watching this, uh, this Thursday, coming up, uh, I'm going to be doing another YouTube gaming stream. So, I'm going to be trying to start around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., just like I did two weeks prior. Uh, so just a heads up about that. Be sure to come hang out on the stream. And uh, in case you guys are watching this in the future, uh, I do YouTube gaming streams uh, every other Thursday around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. starting, hopefully. Um, so if you guys want to see that, uh, feel free to come by, hang out, chat it up with me. Um, and uh, it'll be fun, I'm sure. Uh, not really sure what system I'm going to do yet. I guess we'll find out. It's going to be a last minute thing. Uh, unlike last time But yeah, definitely come check that out um, So yeah, that is it. I don't really have any other news for you or anything else going on I want to say thanks for watching guys uh, YouTube's got this really cool little uh, In-screen annotations now and in-screen cards feel free to click one of these videos here for my more recent let's plays or my let's play playlist or uh, My latest upload and whatever uh, And also if you're new to my channel feel free to click that gameplay and talk icon to subscribe to me and uh and i've got a lot of let's plays on this channel and a lot more to come uh so definitely uh stay subbed uh to to follow what i do here um god i can't even talk right now i'm so damn tired so all right guys i'm out thanks for watching i'll see you soon